I was so tired. I couldn't pray. I tried to pray. Imagine you go to pray. You are all put together. Shut down for one week. In one week, my engine had not yet reboot. Ah, there's problem. When I started praying, the Holy Ghost now opened my eyes to see the activity of demons. And I saw a creature. You know, those days we were young, we used to climb waste beams and we'll be hitting the waste beam cars from empty cans of milk and bomb vita. We will now tear it and build cars, put a long stick and we'll be driving on high speed. <laughs> high speed. Overtaking ourselves. And so, God opened my eyes. The way we used to stamp, you know, trample on those things to create space. That was how I saw a demon walking. What is happening? That's your soul he's trampling on. He doesn't want your soul to ascend. Ah! So I'm not tired. It's warfare. My God. If you know how demons walk, the hardest man on earth is lazy. Demons. The way he said they roam like roaring lion. If a demon is walking, they don't breathe. A demon was busy hitting on my soul down. This one will never pray in his life again. He's finished. The next is, is death and immorality. Jesus Christ. And you don't know what, what is happening. You now find yourself, the old man will resurrect. Because if the soul is not ascended, the, the old man will rise again. And you will go back to the things that you were delivered from. That was when I started warring. I started warring until I expelled the demons. Now, I ensure that my soul is always on cruise boat because I don't want to come down for <laughs> they are strange creatures and so every time you find somebody manifesting a dimension he is standing somewhere on the mountain of God it takes height to manifest if you don't go high your mindset will become optimism that's where the problem is and so in addition to the right consciousness, in addition to the right heart posture, there must be ascensions in the spirit. And ascension has protocols. Psalm 24 from verse 3. It says, who shall ascend the mountains of God? Who? The thing is open for everybody. But who shall? Can I tell you something? Out of all of us sitting here, there are not less than 10 people here with a cutting edge healing anointing cutting i mean cutting edge the minimum here will be 10 that can lay hands on the blind and the eyes will open deaf ears on stop not not less not less than 10. among all of us sitting here if we are few there are at least seven people who should be economic giants because of the level of inspiration they had from when they were children. If you carry a child, you can discern that child. When you see the eyes of a child, you can tell the, the illumination from that child. That's what they call star. The star of a child is the brilliance that comes out of his spirit. And you see it through their eyes. Because the eye is a touch in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, eyes are not eyeballs. They are touches. And so if you, a man of understanding, if you look at a child, you can see the rays from his eyes. You can tell whether this one is great. And at least seven persons here. In this small number. But you see, and I can also tell you that some of us, the time for the manifestation is long overdue. Because from the visions God showed you, from 19... You should have taken over your territory. At 21, you should, have make it, you should have been making national impact. But you are 38 now. It's not based on God. It's based on when you are sent. If you are sent now, strange things will begin to happen. That's how it works. If you don't ascend, you will remain under the mountain for a long time. Hope you know that. He didn't say you have ascended Mount Zion. He said you have come to Mount Zion. When you come to Mount Zion in Christ, you will now ascend with the Holy Spirit. And the way you ascend with the Holy Spirit, he said, who shall ascend the hills of God? Who shall stand 
on his holy mountains. Because there are three things about authority. Number one is to ascend. Number two is to stand. And number three is to dwell. I knew ascension and standing until last, last week a friend now began to tell me about dwelling. A man who dwells has more rank than a man who stands. But many have not even ascended or stand or stand or are standing yet. Meanwhile, there are those who dwell in the mountains of God, and there are those who live, who proceed from, from Zion. Because he said, Savior shall come forth. So they are we have come to Mount Zion in Christ, and then with the Holy Spirit, we ascend, we stand, we dwell, then we go forth. This is the economy of the mountain of God. But to ascend, let's talk ascension because that's where we are now. If we want to talk, go forth. It will be complex. Because when you go forth, you become the law. Moses went to Horeb. But eventually, Moses became the law. Verse 4. Three credentials. Number one, it says, him that has a clean hands. That's your way of life. A clean hands is not your palm. It's your way of life. Uprightness and integrity. This is why I tell you, it's beyond praying in capital letter tongues. If you are praying in capital letter tongues and you are a thief, you can't stand on Mount Zion. Ascension, they will probe you because it's a place of authority. You are taking bribe, God will forgive you, but you can never wield authority. And so it takes integrity and uprightness to ascend Zion. Number two, he said, him that has not, who has a pure heart, a pure heart, this is heart, a heart of love. Love. That's the nature of God he's talking about here. A heart, a tender heart. A heart full of love for the brethren. Full of love for one another. Because what we are talking about here is God entrusting you with authority. And God won't do that if you are not somebody that loves the brethren. And so a pure hand is upright living. A pure heart is a posture of love. Bitterness, backbiting, malice. You want to ascend the mountain of God? No way. The angels will elbow you. This is, this is business of power in the kingdom. And then finally, he said he has not lifted up his soul in vanity. Pride. It takes brokenness. To be able to receive the scepter of God and provoke a manifestation. It takes brokenness. That's why men who make great impact in this kingdom, they are really the most humble people. If you don't discern them, you may judge them based on their temperament. They are those who are vocal. They are those who are not necessarily vocal. They are those who are outgoing. They are those who are indoors. There are those who are social. There are those who are not very social. It's not about personality. Because due to lack of discernment, when you find somebody who is bold and vocal, you call it pride. But it's not about, it's not pride. Pride is a hard posture. You can see somebody bending for everybody. He is more proud than, some people are so proud that he's irritated. When you want to greet them, they say, no, they are brothers. Call them brothers. And the next sentence you will hear is that they are not like all these other people. <laughs> no, 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 I'm a brother. I'm not like all these prophets. Mm -mm. that, that that's concentrated pride. You'll find some people, they see you, they do like this. And you will think they are humble. Tomorrow you now walk past, you didn't notice, you didn't know they were there to greet them. The next thing they will say, well, all these young boys, because we humbled ourselves. <laughs> you didn't humble yourself. That's hypocrisy. And so, the three things that make for ascension is a way of life that is just and upright. It's a heart 
that is full of love and is a soul that is broken in humility. If you don't have these three things, if you like, your tongue should be the strongest tongue you are on earth. If you like, pray longer than all the church put together you are on earth. In fact, long prayer that showcases itself is called Phariseeism. That's the way of Pharisees. They say they love to pray long and stand by street corner that they may be noticed. He said they have their reward. If you like, quote one million scripture, you are on earth. Because the sign that your prayer is beginning to touch a chord in the spirit, the sign that your scripture is beginning to flow from inspiration, is when your heart enters this, the frequency of brokenness. It's when your heart enters the frequency of love. That's when you, that prayer is beginning to touch you. That prayer can now carry you. That scripture can now carry you. If not, it will take you nowhere. If it is divine manifestation you are looking for, believe me, I'm telling you, people know plenty of scriptures. So. Some of the things I experience now, I was quoting them 10 years ago. Fluently and intelligently. In fact, after a while, I now discovered that sometimes if you quote scriptures too much, you mock yourself. So I started holding my peace. I will come for a healing service from the introduction. I will do introduction with 12 scriptures. Pa, 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 pa. 12. When I, that 12 scripture is a progression of healing. When I finish, then I'll say, okay, let's begin with the Bible. I will now teach for one hour. I say, that is introduction. Let's start. When I finish preaching, we will now say, in the name of Jesus, we will scream. When you say if you are healed, wave your hand. You will look from left to right, from front to back, no hand is up. You will now say, Let's worship God. <laughs> Let's worship God first. Maybe they've not heard. You will worship God for 10 minutes and come back, raise your hand. Somebody will now notice that Kai, this man of God, is about to be embarrassed, at least for his boldness. Two people will come out and say, I had a headache when I was coming. I don't know. I can't feel it anymore. <laughs> Kai! Because they will notice that ah, your face was glowing. Sweat now. The frequency of sweat coming down has increased. Though. How come you're, you are not looking so wet? Veins. They are noticing veins on the screen. They will now say, Yesterday I ate something. I was purging. Now I don't, I don't feel it anymore. Where is the pain? It's somewhere here. Even the person doesn't know where the pain they want to help you. And then sometimes the interpreter, God servant, there's a miracle here. What happened? <laughs> he said he had a headache. But when he came in here, the headache disappeared. <laughs> Headaches don't disappear. Now were you seeing it? <laughs> Pastor sir! The whole hall will be shaking. What is the testimony? <laughs> there was stomach pain. It has been there since morning. Uh -uh. The service is in the evening. <laughs> I now discover this thing is beyond quoting scriptures. It's beyond quoting. How does it work? How do we manifest God? He said the hands must be clean. Because the healing service began when you went to the office. The healing service began when they confronted you with bribe. The healing service began when you had issues with that person. And you went to speak evil of that person. And the Holy Ghost was moved in your heart. Troubled you. Keep quiet. You lied against that person. The Holy Ghost said no. Say the truth. And you kept quiet. You can't go up. The healing service doesn't begin two hours to the meeting when you knelt down and you were speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. No, it began when one week ago when you were walking about. That's called a clean hand. People don't know how spiritual things work. We think we can bribe God. You want to go for, you want to go for a job interview. You roll from one end of your door to the other side. You roll from that side and come back. You roll again and go back and say, God, I love you. I love you. Lord, do this and take the glory. It's not through your life only that it will be proven that God is God. 
from ages past the whole universe knows that he's God we, we, we want to manipulate God we want to use God when you are a baby he will look at you I encourage you maybe one time two times, three times when you start growing that thing will stop <laughs> 